uh, welcome to this uh, uh, sample lecture. And uh, I will be constantly looking at the chat box so that, hey, Alison, thanks so much. And uh, I, I, will, I will constantly look at looking at chat box uh, and, and make sure uh, I will entertain your question. Hey, welcome and good morning again. My name is Andy, Andy Wong. I'm the Associate Dean of the Undergraduate Studies and I'm also a marketing professor. And today, welcome to my session. I'm going to share with you my profound love for marketing and in particular, digital marketing. Well, uh, we will share about half an hour uh, together with you. I know that today we have students from uh, many different Asian countries. So anyone from Indonesia, I think there are some. If you are from Indonesia, you can use the chat and say, hello or you know your native language in good morning so hey indonesia we have students from thailand right hey good morning and uh, I, I miss visiting thailand uh, i usually would go there at least once a year hopefully we will get uh, back to the normal very soon we have people from uh, Myama, right hey how's it going haven't visited your country yet, but I would love to. Uh, it's fascinating to me. And we have students from Vietnam. Hey, good morning. I visited once and I really like the food there and I can't wait to come to your country and see you. And we also have students from other places uh, like mainland China, uh, Korea and many other countries. So, you know, uh, Brazil, yes, I've been to Rio um, 10 years ago and it's exciting and wow, you know, time zone difference. Uh, um, I think this is um, actually 10 in the evening, I think, you know, welcome. So, well, today we really have an international gathering together. So let's get started. Um, yeah, hey, how's it going? So thank you so much. Um, so really appreciate you using the chat uh, to interact with me. Um, I don't know how to uh, pronounce uh, um, your language. Uh, maybe later if you become one of us and then uh, of course you know we will share more about our culture and I want to learn about your local culture as well. But today uh, we are talking about digital marketing. So let me share my screen with you. This is going to be a really short lecture. Um, and I will do my best to give you a taste of how your life, how learning would be like at CHK. All right, so today I want to focus on digital marketing. Um, today's agenda, uh, I think we will talk about some marketing tools, actually one of them, one. And then today's I'll talk about a concept, very simple, it's called the three eyes of digital marketing. All right, and then, uh, I have two cases to share with you um, and then conclusion. Wow, very ambitious to want to finish everything in about 25 minutes. I will try my best. Who am I? Uh, I am Andy Wong, I just told you, I teach marketing. Before I was an educator, uh, I uh, was in advertising. So uh, I will skip this part really short. I was a creative director and I have served many international brands in the past, uh, Procter & Gamble, Coca & Cola, uh, things like that. All right, so I just want you to imagine, all right, let's say that you like baking, all right? I know some students, you're really good at cooking and baking, and you bake cookies, you make handmade, uh, homemade cookies. Think about how you will sell your cookies to the consumers. All right, think about it. So how can I make people know we sell cookies and how we can arouse their interest? And then they really try, and then, you know, they really love our products and they keep buying from us. Now, traditionally, we have a term called the customer journey. This is what I just talked about, you know, two seconds ago. We want to make people become aware of us, know we exist. And then of course, we want to uh, create the intention to buy, 
and we want to convert the buying intention into real actions. And then we want to retain them. We don't want them to buy only once, but keep coming back and buy, all right? So in the conventional way, that means, you know, um, in the old days, uh, how we can create awareness and some initial intention to try and buy. We rely on advertising, word of mouth and promotions. And of course, you know, if we can really attract them to a shop, okay, like to a supermarket where it sells our cookies, then maybe we have some sales promotion offer, like um, this is a new product and you buy one pack, you get another pack for free, buy one, get one free. So we want to convert that intention into action, all right? And then of course, we will do after sales services or loyalty program, we let people to collect stamps. If you collect 10 stamps by buying 10 packs of our cookies, then you get another, another pack free, for example. So right now, you guys, you are called digital natives, all right? Which means you're born with the digital technology. So I don't think you would go through the conventional way, but rather I think you will be very familiar with online things like online advertising, social media. You use IG, Snapchat, Twitter. You look for information on website. In terms of conversion, maybe you go to a shop or the supermarket, but you go to an e-commerce platform, to an online shop to buy things. And of course, you know, we use social media to engage. Okay, all right. So I hear some voices. So I just want to make sure I, I uh, see if there's any. You good? Okay. So um, I'm going to mute some of you uh, to make sure there's no environment voice. Okay, cool. Now, before we go on, I really want to uh, have your participation because, you know, in the university, you don't sit in a classroom to just listen, but rather we interact. Uh, we want to get students involved. So I'm going to launch a poll. I want to learn about your habit, your media habit. So you will see the poll and feel free to participate and add your opinions. There are three questions. Feel free to put your answers there and I will give you a few seconds to do so. Right, uh, thank you for replying in the chat, uh, but if you could, you can use the poll function, okay, to give your views. There are three questions. I will give you a few more seconds about how you watch TV, how you use the internet, and so on and so forth. All right, I think we're almost there. I'm going to end my polling in three seconds. Three, two, one. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to share the results with you. I think, can you see the poll results? I think you do. How much time do you spend on watching TV? This is not surprising. I mean, you are the new generation. I, I don't think you spend as much time on watching TV as we did in the past. Uh, most of you watch less than one hour, maybe just a few minutes. 
But in contrast, I think you spend most of your time, okay, your media time on the internet, including your computer, your tablet, your mobile phone. Well, for more than four hours, I'm also in this group. How about online shopping? And uh, you do some online shopping, all right? And uh, I, for one, I love online shopping. I actually shop almost every day. Now, don't tell other people. Thank you so much. You see that, right? I mean, this is your generation. We are actually really making use of the internet digital technology to make our life better. Now, marketing, we really make use of digital technology and you need to use it to reach out to your customers. So let me show you uh, one of my hobbies. So you're still teenagers, don't drink, okay? Um, but I'm an old man, uh, I enjoy whiskey, for example. I don't drink much, just a little sip. Uh, I enjoy the taste and the smell. So I will visit uh, some online shop and look for some good deals. Uh, now this is a, a, a whiskey online store in Hong Kong. I visit quite often. And actually when I go to my Facebook, now this is exactly my Facebook page. Um, and uh, sometimes there are online advertisements on Facebook, right? And for some reason, they know where I have been to. I mean, how does Facebook know what websites I've visited? Maybe a few days ago, I visited this whiskey shop and then mysteriously, I saw the ad of the same shop on Facebook. It's a bit creepy. Have you had a similar experience? I bet you do. So, what's going on? Now, I want to introduce a very simple concept to you today. It's called behavioral targeting. So what it means by behavioral targeting? Well, there are so many words here. Maybe I will skip the words, but going to a diagram to let you know. So basically, your browsers, your internet browsers, will keep track of your browsing history, like cookies and other things. So on the back end, they know what website you have been to. They know what Google keyword search you have done. Like you Google something um, or the social media you, you have visited. Mm -hmm. And then the system behind, including Google and Facebook, they will analyze, okay? And put you in different groups. For example, for me, maybe they will put me in the group who may enjoy alcohol or whiskey, or they will build some profile to classify what type of customers I am. The word behavioral targeting, meaning that they understand my behaviors and my preference through my browsing history and my internet activities. And then based on my behavior, they will push information or advertising to me based on their understanding about me, all right? So, a little bit creepy, but this is what going, what's going on in the world right now. And it's highly effective because, for example, if you search sports-related products on Google, what kind of products or advertisement would Google share with you or push to you? Of course, sports-related outdoor thing because they guess you must be an active person. This is how behavioral target would work. Now, in the interest of time, I will go to uh, the three eyes and then the cases. The three eyes of digital marketing. Why digital technology is so important to marketing? There are three things. First is immediate. Right now, everything happens in real time on the internet. Like today, I can talk to you. You are in Indonesia and we have no physical boundary. And there are you know, participants from Brazil and we can connect with no barrier immediately. Second, incrementality. It means that something that we do on the internet 
some advertisement that we put on the internet, we can measure the result, the incremental change. This is amazing. And finally, to me, I think this is the most important part of digital marketing, being intimate. That is, we can be close to consumers. We can interact, two-way communication. We can build communities online. So this is amazing. Now, I've talked too much. Let's move to the case study. Now, this is a brand called Maya. And this is a department store in Australia. And uh, this is an upmarket Australian department store chain. There is a problem for them. Now, you know, I think in your country, you have department stores and they have sale, like winter sale, Thanksgiving, Black Friday, or New Year sale. So they have all kinds of sale, okay? Big discount, uh, you can buy things for very cheap price. The problem is that you have too many sales of that kind. It's not exciting anymore, right? And sometimes there will be sale items like, oh, the refrigerator in a supermarket or in a department store, half price. Wow, that's wonderful. But I think most of you, your teenagers, you're not interested in refrigerator. You'll be interested in a pair of jeans or uh, a pair of Nike shoes. So some sell items may not be relevant to many different customers. So how can we use digital technology and make use of the free eyes to do marketing? Let's watch the film together. Remember when sales and grabbing a deal looked like this? These days, the world feels perpetually on sale and scarcity and urgency are history. So how do we bring back that nail-biting FOMO for those who hate missing out? By creating a world first, the six second sale. For the first time, Maya will partner with YouTube. Users able to purchase heavily discounted items, but you need to do so in just six seconds. Be quick to click before they disappear in three, two, one. People don't want to spend a long period of time with advertising and that means you have to be really innovative with this format and make sure that, yes, you are going to interrupt them, but how can you deliver something in six seconds that they're going to remember and they're actually going to take action on? So trying to say to somebody, you only have six seconds to buy this product, for me, is probably one of the attractions for it because there is really this, this, this FOMO thing that, that you tap into. To drive awareness, we first served a 15-second pre-roll. Next, we presented every sale product each with its own six second bumper. Maya's six second sale is on. Click for this incredible price. It's gone in three, two, one. With literally hundreds of sale items, traditional production techniques would have been incredibly impractical in a five week time frame. Using Vogon, we're actually able to automate the process. Based on the user's profile, they were retargeted with a sequence of six second ads. And once they'd seen the offer, they'd never see it again. In partnership with Google, we'd created the first ever clickable bumper and proven that six seconds was plenty of time to drive results. With the retail world endlessly on sale, maybe the answer to creating FOMO lies in making people genuinely miss out. Google had a, a huge amount of faith in us because we actually really pushed that format, um, created an idea that tapped into what the market really wanted, um, was really beneficial for the client, but also creatively and technically challenging for us to deliver on. From a Google perspective, this is certainly a world first for being able to use the six second format and Vogon to create such a broad number of assets um, served in such an interesting way. And we're really excited to see the results because I think it's really going to set a benchmark for the retail industry globally. Wow, I think this is so interesting. I mean, if you find this interesting, you can use your chat. Uh, box to let me know that, hey, I like it. I mean, this is great. So, wonderful, right? I mean, we all watch YouTube videos and of course, we all hate the advertisement before the video that you want to watch, right? That six seconds, tiny little video ad. Hey, this Maya uh, department store, they're so clever. They make use of those six seconds YouTube advertisement and push the items, the sale item 
to individuals. Thank you so much. I mean, from your check box, some of you said you like it. I like it very much. Like with the use of the behavioral targeting I mentioned to you, they kind of know who you are, okay? And they know what you are interested, okay? For example, I am a, a, a nerdy guy. I like tech and devices. So on YouTube, I watch iPhone reviews. I watch these gadget uh, 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 unboxing films. So if Maya would want to push a sales item to me by use of the YouTube video, so probably they will push something tech related, maybe, you know, uh, a GoPro, maybe another uh, a battery pack, okay? So I don't want to go through the results in detail, but on this slide, you can see that so many people click the ad, those six second ad, and actually buy the sale item, right? And the profit, excellent. So digital, this is almost like we can customize marketing effort to individual customer because we have some idea about who the customers are. All right, thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys, you know, using the chat and give your feedback to me. And I hope that, you know, when you really come to my classroom face to face, we can have more interaction. In the interest of time, I want to quickly go through the second case, which is even more interesting. So the learning, of course, things are immediate and we can measure the incremental results and it's highly personalized and intimate. Second, this is a case in Germany. The brand name is German Rail, railroad company. So train and, and railway. So what happens? The problem for this uh, company is that local German travelers, they always go abroad when they have a vacation. They will travel to other countries for their, uh, for, for their holidays. And as a railway company, you want people to stay in Germany and use train to travel. You don't want people to take an airplane and go to other countries, right? So how to convince a German customer to stay in Germany for their holidays, all right? Now, because of time, I will skip the film here. I will go straight to the idea. So what they have done is really amazing. They keep track of the German customers who use internet to search for travel information. For example, somebody would Google, uh, let's say Tokyo, uh, because this German uh, lady, she is planning a vacation in Japan, looking for information in Tokyo. And then, just like my example, okay, I Google something about whiskey. And when I go to my Facebook, all right, then on the Facebook, German Rail will push some information about my travel destination, which is Japan. However, they do something really, really amazing. For example, let's say a customer uh, is interested in going to London this time, okay? So they show people two pictures side by side on their Facebook. On the left-hand side, this is London. This is a bridge in London, okay, Tower Bridge. And then they also show the real-time air ticket price from Munich, okay, a German city, flying to London. It will cost you about 200 euros. On the right-hand side, they use the AI algorithm to find a location in Germany. So I don't know this place, but in this German city, there's also a tower bridge. It looks like the London Tower Bridge, right? On the left-hand side. And they tell you, if you go to this place from Munich and you take the train, it costs you less than, you know, 20 euro. All right, more example. Venice in Italy. Well, if you fly there, you have to pay about 500 euros. 
if you go to Hamburg, okay, another German city, well, the scenery will be so similar. Ah, oh, this is so smart. 19 euro by railway. Vancouver on the left hand side, wow, this is expensive. Over a thousand euro to fly there to Canada. Another German place with wonderful forests and a hanging bridge almost exactly the same. 19 euros again. Okay, they also push it on uh, IG or some other social media. Okay, at the bottom, this is Guilin. Guilin is in mainland China. Wow, this is wonderful. You look at the bridge and wow, this is like a picture. Miraculously, in another German place on the upper side, we have a very similar scene. Once again, using AI, to find the photo in Germany that is so similar to the location that you're Googling. It can be German, uh, it can be China, it can be Japan, and so on and so forth. And then tell them the real time air tickets price and the price for the train ticket using railway. Wonderful. So, again, a really good result in terms of increasing in sales and revenue. What we learned, immediate, with the use of digital technology, things can be real time. For example, I know that you're Googling something in Jakarta, you want to visit Jakarta, and then with the technology, you can offer real time price comparison. If I fly from Hong Kong to Jakarta, the air tickets. Or if I stay in Hong Kong to go to Sai Kong, uh, not the Sai Kong in Vietnam, but Sai Kong in Hong Kong, all right? Then, you know, we can do the actual price comparison. And also, very intimate. Ah, they know that I'm interested in Bangkok or I'm interested in Phuket. Oh, and then they push me some information I would find useful. So digital marketing can be, can be so amazing. So if I have more time, of course, I want to talk more about this really wonderful area of marketing. So, but let me conclude right now. First of all, don't feel scared. I know that you are 17, maybe you are 18. You feel that, hey, the whole world is so uncertain, right? Technology, AI, big data, they are like science fiction, but it's real, it's happening today. How can I cope with the changes? Don't worry. I think this is why you should go to a good university to learn, to learn how to learn. So in marketing, in business, we keep pace with the changes. We use AI, we use AR, we use big data, and we're going to learn about how they can help us do business. And when we learn, we don't just learn the tools or the techniques, we learn the principles. For example, three eyes, they're really good principles to guide us design our marketing campaigns. And at Sage K Business School, we also talk about mindset. What means by mindset? It means the way of thinking. We want to train students. You need to know how to do things. But more importantly, you should learn how to think, how to strategize, how to formulate strategies. This is far more important than how you actually can create an advertisement or to uh, do a social media campaign. They're important too, but the way that you think is more important. And I think, yes, of course, being intimate. I think why I love marketing so much, why I love business, because marketing is a business of reaching people. We serve consumers. We want to understand them. We want to know their needs. We want to create good products create good services to make people's life better. That's why I think deep down, I love marketing because I love 
serving people. I love talking to people. I love knowing people. I want to be close to people. That's how marketing enables me to do that. So, my last point is, whatever you're interested in, maybe you, want, you love finance, you love marketing, you love management, or you don't like business, you, will, you might want to study some other subjects like uh, engineering or medicines. I think the last point should be true, whatever you do in the future. That is, you should engage other people to work with you. This is a era of co-creation, not only in business, not only in marketing, in every single discipline. So the internet, the digital technology actually brings diplomacy, uh, a democracy to people that we can share. We should respect each other. We let people participate, just like the way that I like to teach. I want to involve students together. It's not me teaching you only, but together we discover knowledge together by discussion, by brainstorming, by interacting. So, thank you so much. Uh, 30 minutes for a mini lecture is not easy. I hope that I can see you in person in Hong Kong one day, and then we have more time to share different knowledge and cases and wonderful ideas together. All right, thank you so much. Hey, if you have more questions about the CHK Business School, about marketing, about anything, you can take your mobile phone and take this picture because this is my email. Just email me. Even if you don't want to study business school, you want to learn about um, social science, you like psychology, and you want to have some opinions about psychology at CHK, email me. I'm happy to, seriously. All that I want you to do is to find a subject, a major, that you will feel interested, whether they are in business or not. In the end, I encourage you to go for your interests. Study something that you like. And the next four years, you would enjoy going back to school. Every day is like, I want to learn more. I'm discovering, discovering something new and interesting. That's what I want you to do in the next four years. So if you want to, email me anytime.